Okay, our final topic now on the central limit theorem is a bit of a generalization of the central limit theorem, which is called the delta method. Okay. And the so remember what the central limit theorem allows us to do is it allows us to actually, uh, allows us to approximate the distribution of a sum of I of the random variables for large N. Okay. Um, what the delta method allows us to do is to approximate a the distribution of a function of uh, random variables, of a function of a sequence of random variables for large values of N, provided certain conditions are met. So that's what we're going to talk about here. So let's suppose that we have a sequence satisfying that the sequence subtracting off some constant and multiplying by some other uh, sequence converges in distribution to a random variable y as n goes to infinity. For some limiting random variable y, for some fixed constant x0, and for a sequence cn, real values such that cn is going to infinity. Also, let's suppose that g is a function, a real valued function that is differentiable, has to have a derivative at the constant x zero. Then the delta method says that cn times g n of xn minus g at x zero converges in distribution to the derivative of g at x zero, that's why we need to differentiability, times the random variable y from the original sequence. We'll see an example of how we apply this in a bit, but let's first get a, a sense of what's the idea behind this proof, okay? So since G is differentiable at X zero, we can express, we can approximate G of X zero plus Delta where Delta is some small delta. So for some small deviation from uh, x0, we can approximate g at x0 plus delta by saying, well, it's, it's close to g of x0 plus some linear approximation, right? So this is, so we take the derivative at x0 and we just take the delta and that's our first order approximation. So this is a first order approximation. And we can put delta n. So let's define delta n to be xn minus x0 for each n. And let's define yn to be cn times delta n. So then by assumption, Right, so we've already made the assumption that Cn times delta N is converging in distribution of some random variable Y. And we also have that the sequence Cn goes to infinity. So because Cn is going to infinity, this implies that delta N, 
must be going to zero with high probability. The reason for that is because if delta n did not go to zero, then if delta n went to anything except zero, then cn going to infinity would force y, yn to go off to infinity, which would prevent convergence of the sequence yn. So therefore, what does that tell us? What that tells us is that if we consider the deviation, we're now looking at the function of g evaluated at xn minus g of x zero. So one way to express this is well, we've defined by definition xn is equal to, to x0 plus delta n. Okay. And we can approximate this by the Taylor expansion as delta n g of x0 plus delta n times the first derivative at x0 minus g of x0. So the x g of x0 is cancel. And what we're left with is g prime of x0 times delta n, which is a constant times delta n. And by assumption, uh, I missed something. OK, so we're missing the cn. So it's a constant, and it's a, a constant sequence times delta n which by assumption, Cn times delta n conversion distribution to y. And so what we're left with is this scalar multiple, g prime of x0, uh, g prime of x0 times yn. Which for large n is approximately g prime of 0 of g prime of x zero times y. So this is called the delta method. This is called the delta method. Why is it a delta? Because we're saying that we're going to approximate uh, the value of a function at some at some xn by something close to, by, by looking at a delta with respect to some other um, variable. So, this is called the delta method. And let's see how we can apply this. So what's the example? So the example is Let's say we have IID Bernoulli's and we define P hat N as the normalized sum of these, the, yeah, the average of these Bernoulli's for the first N. Then what do we know? We know that N times P hat N by definition, it's the sum of independent IID Bernoulli's. It's binomial parameter N and P. But by the central limit theorem, we know that P hat N is, approx is asymptotically normal with mean P and variance p q times n. So a n stands for asymptotically normal. So it's normal in the asymptote. It's normal for large values of n. So now let's consider by the delta method. Let's use the delta method. And let's apply the delta method to the function one over x. 
So we're interested in one over X, one over the proportional. Okay. So G prime of X is minus one over X squared, just to be clear. And by this, then what happens is we have one over, if we're interested in the reciprocal of the average, one over P hat N is by definition G of P hat N, which by the Delta method is going to be asymptotic. So P hat N is asymptotically normal by the delta method, this should be approximately G prime of X zero. What is X zero? Well, in order to work this out, let's work out something in general. Uh, so this will be a second example, and then we'll go back and we can apply this example to the first. So I really should have done these in a different order, which is that for V1, V2, IID with mean mu variance sigma squared. Central limit theorem implies that Vn minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n, oh, I'm sorry, sigma times the square root of n, because we're dealing with the sum, converges in distribution to normal zero one. Now, by the delta method, if we have G differentiable at mu such that g prime of mu is not zero because we don't want to zero out the sequence then the delta method implies that g of vn minus g of mu divided by the same standard deviation converges in distribution to G prime of mu times Z. So in other words, this is gonna be normal zero G prime of mu squared. So up above, we have something that converges to a normal with mean P and this asymptotic variance. And so now what we need to do is we need to evaluate G prime at P, which is mu, right? So G prime of, of P. So what we're left with here is this is going to go to minus, one over p squared times normal p p q over n and first thing to realize is that the minus can be thrown away because normal distribution is symmetric um and the next thing to realize is that the what we end up with is normal one oh i'm sorry uh, it would be, we could throw away the minus if it was symmetric around zero. It's not symmetric around zero. So we're left with normal with mean minus one over P and uh, variance is going to come in as one over P squared, squared times PQ over N. So this would be normal minus one over P and Q over N P cubed. 
So there's a way, there's an application of the delta, uh, the delta method. Um, and in this case, we're using the, uh, we're using the central limit theorem and we're combining it with the delta method. Remember, the delta method is actually not specific to the central limit theorem. It applies for any sequence of random variables that converges in distribution to another random variable. Um, we, we will tend to see that happen a lot with, in conjunction with the central limit theorem, because that's the most, that's a very common, uh, theorem that gets applied to get to, um, to approximate a distribution, a sequence of random variables for large N by the central limit theorem, but, uh, it does, it can be applied more generally. So that's something to be aware of.